Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 50 minutes or so discussing a carrier and the portfolio of products that they offer that will not only help you retain your current book of business, but also give you additional avenues to pursue in the marketing of your choice of products. Your main focus within your agency um, can benefit from the offerings with this company and make certain that uh, the support that you can get from both the carrier and our organizations to help you in this regard will be elaborated upon today. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be made available on our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel as well. And if you have a relationship with one of our agent success managers, your marketers within Premier Marketing, they will have access to that recording as well. You'll notice in the software package that there's a section for both questions and chat. We ask that you put your questions in the questions box, and we find that we do cover the vast majority of those questions through the course of the presentation, but we will check periodically to make certain that we do so. And if there is something that we cannot answer today, we'll make certain that we make that information available to you so you have the full value of the investment of your time today. The presentations are normally aimed at a, well, a wide variety of agents. So there are different people with different experiences that view these presentations. And so we try to satisfy the whole spectrum. For some, that might be a bit repetitive. For some, it might be brand new information. And for some, hey, it's a welcome review. So hence the presentation components that we'll go through today. We normally start with a little bit of a level set as to who Premier Marketing is. For those of you that aren't as familiar with us as some others, we are a national marketing organization founded in 1968. That's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform. We're licensed in all 50 states, acting as an insurance wholesaler through independent insurance agents, such as yourself. And we do so through contracts that are at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. That portfolio of products includes the base medical coverages for folks on Medicare, including the Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement plans and the standalone Part D prescription drug programs, the PDP plans. But we also offer a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, final expense life insurance with some great marketing opportunities there for you as well and pre-need plans, which for some is a great way to ingratiate yourself into your target community. We also offer long and short-term care programs and di disability income plans and ancillary products, such as what we'll discuss today that include the dental vision hearing programs, critical illness cancer plans, hospital indemnity and accident programs, and even a telehealth program. When we look at the Medicare Advantage plans, that's one of the components that folks will look at on a national basis because those carriers are there for you, along with some of the strong regionals that make a difference for you in your market. But when we speak to ancillary programs, many of those that we discuss today are associated along with the marketing of this product. However, many of them have a, a piece of value for folks that have other coverages as well. And that includes people that may have just a prescription drug program, a standalone PDP program. And you'll notice on this list that the national carriers are there for you. Normally they're all part of that same MA contract that you have, the Medicare Advantage contract, a couple of exceptions. The Mutual of Omaha contract is for their PDP program only. So it's an additional component to any of the other offerings that they have. And Clever RX is actually a discount program and not a standardized uh, PDP plan. Medicare supplements, many folks think that ancillary products don't have a relation to Medicare supplements. Well, if you look at this, it's a broad portfolio of products, and that might be a little bit of a misnomer of sorts because many of the folks that have this coverage have specific needs that can be addressed by ancillary products. And some of that may well be affected on your marketing of these programs. Are you marketing 
a plan F to those who still qualify, a G to some of the newer folks on Medicare or older Medicare beneficiaries, or maybe you're one of the N people looking at those plan types. So some of what we discussed today has a direct bearing on folks that are working the Medicare supplement arena as well. But when we go into ancillary products, we speak to the different categories that are available and you see the leaders in each of those spaces. And the folks that we visit with today, SureBridge, are among the leaders in many of these categories and can make a big difference for you because it gives you not only an additional revenue stream for your agency, but it covers that specific need that your prospects and clients are looking for. And it also gives you additional flexibility as to how to market. Some of these are considered demand products, DVH products, particularly dental vision here programs, a great door opener for other lines of business, be it within the Medicare target market, or hey, you might be a life insurance agent in your mind, and these can be helpful there as well, along with some of the other coverages that some people expect that come along with Medicare medical coverage, and they really don't. So we want to make certain that we can fabricate in these different coverages to cement your current book of business, but also expand upon that by offering programs that, hey, this is what folk want. And that's what we're looking to do today. So as we speak to the Medicare market opportunity, obviously, you don't come on a program like today that doesn't talk about the silver tsunami, the aging of the baby boomers, one every 10 seconds, 10,000 plus a day. Very true, uh, an exponential growth into this area. But we see some folks that are abstaining in a manner of speaking from fully accessing all of their Medicare benefits when they turn 65 for one reason or another. For those of us that are tail end baby boomers, we don't access full social security benefits until the age of 67. And some folks, hey, I'm in good health. I enjoy what I do, I'm gonna continue to work. So you have group coverage and other concerns that might whittle down that total number, but that's more than made up by this component. That's that portion of the population that's under the age of 65 accessing Medicare benefits because of disability. And they are great prospects for the programs that we discussed today. Because in each of the choices that someone has when they come on Medicare, well, they don't have to do anything if they don't want to. They can even decline Part B for good reason or not. Some might self-insure for the uh, financial shortfall of original Medicare when it comes to some of the coverages. Some will pick up that standalone Part D program. Some will go that MedSup route or go the bundled Medicare Advantage route. In each of these areas, these folks can be a solid prospect for you in the ancillary field. Opening up a relationship that you have with folks that you haven't visited with in the past and gives you that opportunity to cement your current business and grow it as well. We recently finished up the annual election period within the Medicare arena and the open enrollment period for the under 65 market. But when we look at Medicare and we go, well, gee, everybody's already made their decisions, all these different pieces that come into play. For those of you active in this space, you know that's not the case. Kaiser Family Foundation tells us that the vast majority of people on Medicare haven't compared their, their plan they had currently with the options that they have moving forward. And for those of you active in this space, you know what a financial penalty that can be. So that means we have an audience within the folks that are already on Medicare that really need our help, not just for a review of their current benefits, but to expand upon them based on needs that change because that happens. And it doesn't matter what kind of base coverage they have, if they're in a Medicare Advantage prescription drug plan, or if they're getting the medications in a standalone program, you have different people in different casts then that we need to look at, they didn't do that review. And with a little bit of knowledge in those areas, which you can reference off of some of our other recorded trainings or through your own research, however you choose to do it, that gives us the legitimate reason to reach out to people continuously throughout the year because we're able to translate the jargon 
that comes as part of any organization that, gee, they're labeling yourself as an acronym as part of the government. CMS, well, there should be CMMS because it's the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But you look at that. This is taken off the CMS website, 4,420 acronyms. It gives us that purpose, that means of educating the folks because, hey, we can help them understand the coverages they have, the coverages that they should have in our, our minds, other things that come into play. And it reminds us to make certain that if we don't limit the use of acronyms, we're at least explaining them. So we're properly communicating because folks on Medicare aren't using the material that's out there by the government, be it through an ebook for their Medicare and you, if they had one mailed to them, if they're not using an app off of the App Store or Google Play to see what's covered or the different pieces of material that are out there on the internet put forward by the government that helps explain the different programs. We are the source of truth in this area and recognizing shortfalls within the program or additional needs from the base medical coverages with Medicare and the under 65 business, because what we talk about today does extend into that market as well. It gives us then the opportunity to be that point of reference, to be referable, and to do what we need to do to support our book of business and our families as well. And we need to be able to deliver that information in the manner in which people are receptive to receiving it. And this is a big difference than it has been perhaps even just pre-pandemic or 10 years ago. It's a different world. Uh, when I started in the business, we, contrary to popular, or popular rumor, we didn't use a granite and a chisel, but we weren't far behind. You know, there's all kinds of paper involved, all kinds of kits that, well, aren't always used the way they were in the past. And so while there are some folks that still want to meet face to face, you can do that virtually through Zoom calls or whatever other means that are there. But there's also that portion of the population that's kind of a hybrid where we need to discuss the information with them so they fully understand it. We remain compliant and we do so with a population that's increasingly savvy. A lot of times we think of the Medicare population as being just seniors, but it's not. We looked at that percentage earlier where 17% of the population is under the age of 65. A little bit of ageism there. That doesn't mean they understand systems better than every other Medicare recipient, but they've been trained over the last few years to accept information this way and realize the value of some things that are done virtually. Doctors, specialists, hospitals, dentists, even the faith-based communities in which we participate have delivered services, so to speak, in such a manner. And it does us a great deal of justice as well because it helps us document, it helps us stay compliant, and it helps us manage our most valuable resource, which is our time. And even though the products we discuss today are not subject to the different election periods or the special election periods or the special special election periods that the carriers help us identify, they may well have an effect on discovering people who do qualify for those special election periods. And of course, we have the opportunity to offer programs that aren't locked in. And that's what we talk about today. So as we speak of the portfolio that helps us sell, Normally, we have invited our friends over at uh, Sherbridge to help us in this regard. Um, but Mr. Groff had uh, a family obligation in which he is unable to help us today. But he did provide us the information we need to go through and detail why Sherbridge, why we want to look at the products that are available and how they benefit our prospects and clients and our agencies as well. So as we look at these ancillary products aimed at the senior market, keep in mind, many of these programs aren't exclusive to the senior market. So it's not like a person has to be on Medicare to enroll in many of these programs. And if we use them properly, it helps us set up our T65 
funnel, our turning 65 demographic that so many people pursue. It differentiates us from uh, the folks that are chasing people, in a manner of speaking, just for base medical. We offer demand products that can make a huge difference. And we look at the product portfolio that is offered by Surebridge. We've got a number of different programs here that you may not have considered. The different accident programs that can help people, particularly in those areas where folks are very aware of some of the challenges that come about in that area. I grew up on a farm in rural Nebraska a long time ago, it seems like. Um, but that's one of the occupations where, well, gee, they're subject to a lot of accidents or a higher risk type of circumstance. You may be aware of people in other demographics that fit that same sort of uh, situation. And then, of course, we have the illness plans. So we look at um, not only programs that help people when they go into the hospital, but also programs that deal with certain critical illnesses. And since in many circumstances, that is a big point in many people's minds, especially when you look at some of the Medicare Advantage plans and the co-payments that people are subject to if they do go into the hospital, it's a great point of discussion and a great way to pursue additional coverage and additional benefits. We also have protection for the folks that perhaps are challenged with the ability of continuing to generate income for themselves and their households. So we have different disability programs that are available through Surebridge as well. And in addition, simplified issue term life insurance, that is a very strong product for them as well. But one of the things that a lot of folks talk about right off the bat, because it is a demand product, and many of the folks that are coming off of group coverage or accustomed to having it as part of their benefit package are the dental vision hearing programs. And these are programs that are simple to sell, a need that is easily recognizable, and a great way for us to work different marketing opportunities that we may not have available in other circumstances. So let's look at some of these different pieces that come into play. If we're looking at specifically over 65 opportunities, we look at folks that have just Medicare Parts A and B, because remember, there are folks that do that, a good portion, actually, a, a fairly healthy percentage. And these folks are great prospects for the demand product that I mentioned, programs that are specifically for dental situations, specifically for vision assistance, and the combo package of dental vision hearing programs. Folks need that across the board. When we look at the folks that may have chosen a Medicare Advantage program, many times those are available without additional premiums. So there may be additional dollars there to help us with the cost of some additional coverage. But the folks that have those in many cases may be concerned about what happens when they go into the hospital. So that program that helps with hospitalization expenses can be a big difference maker for us, as are the programs that deal with critical illness. If you look into your own family situation and you realize that, hey, we got a bit of a history here with cardiovascular challenges or with cancer or with some other illnesses, we need to address that and that can make a difference. So bear with me just a moment when I take a short break here. I apologize for that quick break. Uh, it is actually an example of why people need some of these coverages. I am on certain medications that are shipped from a specialty pharmacy and the weather really, well, it kind of screwed the pooch, so to speak, when it comes to the delivery of those systems. And they're directly attributable to critical and illness programs. And that can make a big difference for you and the folks that you visit with in order to alleviate some of the monetary pressures of the cost of these coverages and of course making certain that we're able to deliver things in a timely fashion this didn't happen for me in this circumstance but hey that's the way it works and while we have this kind of divided out with dental vision hearing on just the portion that says medicare parts a and b 
think about the fact that our that folks that take out a Medicare supplement plan have the A and B. They're not put on another type of administrative uh, function through a Medicare Advantage company. You might have some discount programs that are working for med subs, but they don't come with these coverages that you see a lot of times that are folded into a Medicare Advantage plan. And there are circumstances where perhaps the need for these is greater than the benefit that's being offered by a, an MA plan, a Medicare Advantage plan. But we got to look at this a little more holistically and realize that much of what we speak of today goes beyond just the folks that have MA coverage. So let's talk a little bit about the hospital-wise program that SureBridge offers. And this is their HIP program, their hospital indemnity program, that can make a big difference for us as we market in the community, particularly past the open enrollment period. Not necessary to exercise a SEP, a special election period for this, but it's a great way for us to go back and revisit with folks about the needs that they may feel that come about because of the choice of their base medical. And when you look at this, the markets that are involved, this is a system, this is a program that's designed to help offset some of the costs of the out-of-pocket exposure that folks have in this area. And it's a big market. If you have someone that's self-insuring with just Medicare A and B, man, they really need help when it comes to the cost of a hospital stay. And many folks that are on just A and B don't realize that there's not a max out of pocket on the MA program, and they can have multiple charges with admissions into the hospital with base Medicare coverage. That's a big differentiator. This is also something that can apply to your under 65 folks, particularly the ones that are on a ACA program. I don't like to refer to it as Obamacare, but the ACA programs, many of those are very high deductibles and a lot of that financial exposure comes through hospitalization. So we wanna make certain that we can help that clientele address that as well. And keep in mind, if we're marketing into the ACA arena, you get a kind of a different set of uh, marketing compliance regulations that you have that you don't have or that you do have with Medicare Advantage plans. And keep in mind those programs, the average MOOP this past year is over $5,000. Now we see a very competitive area in that for 2023 benefits where different programs within the Medicare Advantage arena are being very creative in some of the social determinant of health benefits, transportation, over-the-counter cards, those sorts of things. But you still have that exposure when it comes to a hospitalization. So we want to be cognizant of the fact that revisiting some of our folks that we worked with during the annual election period. Keep in mind, I said worked with. That doesn't necessarily mean sold. If you still have the opportunity to reach out and visit with them, you can go back to, hey, I wanted to once again make certain that we are addressing the needs. I realize you may have taken a different option than what I had offered you, but this is a program that we offer many people on Medicare because it can make a huge difference to them when it comes to bucking up for a check when someone gets out of a hospital, paying for that out-of-pocket exposure. We want to make certain then what we understand how these programs work. And so let's take an example of Jane, who's 65 years old, recently enrolled in a popular low-cost MA plan. She's happy with the program, but she's worried about some of those out-of-pocket exposures. So keep in mind here, and this is not uncommon in many of the MA plans, where you have a per-day price for so many days within a stay. And that can add up fairly quickly. If some of the things that she has gone through went through an ER with an ambulance and perhaps were addressed on an outpatient basis, you still have that financial exposure. And many times when people go into a hospital, they don't actually just go straight home when they're released. Sometimes they're put into a sniff unit. 
a skilled nursing confinement, a skilled nursing facility that helps address some of the challenges they had as to why they went into the hospital in the first place. Did they have a heart attack? Did they have a stroke? Um, hip replacement? Are there different pieces of physical therapy that has to be done in-house before that can go um, on, a, a, out on a basis from them in their home? Look at that. That can really add up to some dollars. And we can address it pretty simply with a base program through hospital uh, hospital wise and add on certain low price riders to directly address those costs. A much more palatable number than perhaps the options that she would have had with a Medicare supplement plan because many of those, well, depending upon the plan type she took, might be needed as well. And keep in mind, these are free for service programs that are paid regardless of the other coverage. And many folks don't realize until they've gone into the hospital that, hey, by gosh and by golly, I've got non-medical expenses I have to deal with as well. So some of these coverages can really make a difference as to the financial stability of the folks that we're visiting with. And that financial stability may well affect the other business that we have in the house. Too much month and not enough money. So they may be looking at, gee, I gotta, I gotta dial back life insurance. I may be discontinuing this program or whatever. Long-term care programs, I got one, but it's pretty expensive. How am I gonna balance my dollars and my budget? These programs can help people regardless of their base coverage, but is most commonly associated with MA plans. When we look at the financial details, one of the big things that come into mind right away is this, issue ages. So this isn't just for people on Medicare, the traditional Medicare beneficiary that we think of that's aged in, 65 plus. Even some of the folks that are disabled can make a big difference. But you can also then utilize this to help with other family members in that household. And if we're dealing with a disabled person, well, keep in mind, that can make a big difference as to how we can break the structure and make it work. Um, because there are different factors that come up with uh, the rate that these programs offer. You know, it's an issue age, um, unisex, so there's not a difference between a male or a female when it comes to the rates. They can layer on different types of plans. Some of the folks we visit, well, gee, they live alone. So we want to look at a program that can directly help them. But there might be a couple in the household. And it may be like my parents were, different ages. So we got to look at how we can address that because some may be on Medicare. Some might be, uh, oh, I'm going to take a risk and self-insure until I get to Medicare age to make a difference. Individual and children. A lot of folks are having children much later in life. And we're also seeing a number of folks that are grandparents that are taking care of their grandchildren. So there are different programs that we need to look at to make certain that we can tailor the rate structure most beneficially to the audience that we're visiting with. There are certain pre-existing conditions for some of these people, six months. Um, in those regards, there's not a rate a waiting period for the benefits to kick into play once the policy is issued. It does have a one-time application fee of 20 bucks. But we look at some of the different things as to, gee, is there a GI period, a guarantee issue period for these folks? If so, when is that? And it is the time period with um, in the area in which the person turns 65. So we wanna make certain we get you specific details on the market that you're approaching. And it's a true accept or reject, simplified underwriting. There's not a lot of, uh, gee, I got to wait 30 plus days. Why is this taking so long? Doesn't work that way. It doesn't check the medical information boards, the MIBs. It doesn't do a prescription drug check or history of the health history. We want to make certain, however, that the application is completed honestly and work through because you have something in play and then it doesn't pay. And I don't care if it's with Surebridge or whatever carrier it's out there. We want to make certain that we're doing our due diligence and delivering upon a, an application for people as well. 
bear with me. I'm sorry, Doug. I had to answer my uh, FedEx was at the door. That was the reason for a delay in some of the audio. And I hook it over there, and one of the drugs requires a signature. Otherwise, I want to worry about it. When we look at the different guarantee issue areas, it's available on all issue ages, and it, it impacts household thresholds that can be laid out here on the grid here below. So this is an important slide. Some of you may screenshot it, but keep in mind you're going to be receiving this presentation and the PowerPoint would be available to you through your marketer as well. But in that area, we got to make certain that we realize that all of the benefits must fall between, uh, within the, the guarantee issue thresholds as shown here. And if any one benefit is higher than the, the GI thresholds, the entire policy is subject to simplified issue underwriting. So it can make a difference as to how we put these plans in play and it helps us develop a plan as to what's the coverages we're going to offer in one of our base policy offerings. Because keep in mind, you're the driver of this boat. And some folks, well, gee, that ambulance rider, eh, okay, whatever, or whatever it happens to be, we want to look at the fact that we want to make certain that this stays within the guarantee issue thresholds. But we're also making certain that the benefit package we put together fits the budget as well. So that can make a difference as to how we approach the offering of this program. It is a program where when, when we look at the base benefits, you have the hospital confinement policy. And that's the one that pays that daily benefit for each day of confinement in the hospital due to an injury or illness. The average stay for a Medicare beneficiary in a hospital is a little under three days, but I don't know about you, but I never figure myself as being average. I might get out earlier, I might get out later, and a lot of it depends on why are you in the hospital? Some things can't be handled in two or three days, and those days can add up regardless of the type of coverage that you have as a base medical coverage. Because keep in mind, it's not just the medical expenses. It's non-medical as well that we need to make certain that we look at. So this gives you, however, an opportunity to match that daily benefit based on some of their current coverage. So if we go back and we look at, oh, I don't need to go back that far. We look at an MA plan that, okay, there's a daily charge of 150 days, 150 bucks for three days. We can match it. We can make certain it comes into play by both the dollar amount and the benefit period that's payable. One of the things that we see in the divine wisdom of our government or the programs that are initiated through CMS is the observation benefit, which can be a big concern as to how some of the base medical pays. Because if they're sitting in the ER and it can be overnight and they're not admitted, coverage is different than if they're admitted into the hospital. So these programs come with an observation benefit that's automatically included. That can be a big deal. And we also need to make certain that we realize uh, the importance of addressing not just the physical maladies that we encounter, but also the mental and nervous benefits that come into play. And these are um, when you're in a period of isolation or whatever the circumstance may happen to be, we want to make certain that we can address those needs as well. And sometimes they are overlooked in our discussions otherwise. They can come with optional benefits as well. Remember that slide we had with the different riders that can make a difference as to how not only the policy is priced, but what it covers. These are some things that are really important to certain people, particularly as to how they pay when a person goes into the hospital or confined to it. And that can be a lump sum payment that can be in addition to some of the other benefits that come into play. We also have the benefit for outpatient surgery. Much more common over the last few years than it was in the good old days, whenever those may happen to be. Um, a lot of that is handled with day surgery. I recently had a cardiac oblation, outpatient. 
was in there for about a day and they knock you out they do some different things on your ticker boy those can get expensive if you got some base coverages for that the billing i saw for my procedure that went in to my insurance carrier was over a hundred and eleven thousand dollars now that's negotiated down by the carrier but there are still out-of-pocket exposure um, to the individual that goes through some of those different types of procedures. You see a lot of that in cardiovascular activity or, or orthopedics and some of the different things that come into play. And a lot of that then when you're dealing with a specialist, well, okay, you got a medical professional that might be a tad more fond of the services that they deliver than you see on an out, otherwise an outpatient basis. And the next piece, this is the one thing that is actually a big concern for a lot of folks, particularly if they've had a family member or someone that they're close to that went into the hospital and comes out and needs to take advantage of coverages for a skilled nursing facility. And this rider can be really important because if they have the base medical with original Medicare, okay, fully covered for the first 20 days, the next 80, not so much that daily rate then and if it goes beyond 100 days doesn't happen all that often but many folks will use a skilled nursing benefit as a bit of a segue into how they formulate short-term care or long-term care programs and that can make a big difference so you have different opportunities here to look at what these coverages the duration of these coverages are and how we fold that in to their base medical too Gee, we got one here for a hunt one day one through way 100. Keep in mind, this can be applicable for folks under the age of 65. And the good Lord doesn't say, I, I'm not going to let you have a heart attack till you're 65. Many people are experiencing some challenges within those areas. Um, and they may need that sniff unit to help them recover as much as possible. You have some other riders that come into play. So the emergency care writer, um, there are challenges to get into your doctors in many circumstances because of the pandemic and the stressors that are put on these medical professionals as well. That can be a very valuable writer as we speak to that situation because many of the folks say, well, gee, I just went in through the ER, couldn't get an appointment with my doc. They said, go to urgent or, or emergency care. Heck, you call a doctor's office now. The recording you get up front says, okay, if this is a medical emergency, hang up and go to the emergency room. This, of course, addresses that cost. And it seems that the cost within an ER or even an uh, urgent center are multiplied versus a doctor's appointment. That transport, that ambulance rider can be really, really expensive Well, as well. Talk about an expensive uh, horizontal or uber in a manner of speaking those can really rack up charges and for many people they're well aware of those costs because it may have happened to them or a family member in the past we also want to make certain that we address some of the outpatient my, uh, major diagnostic writers for those of you that have had imaging done be it an mri ct pet scan ct8 whatever seeing how your tickers work with an eeg or an ekg not exactly an inexpensive test this can help with some of those as well and it's something that normally in this particular circumstance specifically addressed on an outpatient basis so once again we need to go back and look at the guarantee issue components of this and this is a manner of almost a prime directive as to how we set up these policies Obviously, we want to integrate them with their current coverages or lack thereof, but we want to make certain that we're able to help these folks get their coverages on a GI basis, on a guarantee issue basis, because we're looking to offset those costs and make certain that we're taking one of the stressors off these individuals when it comes to, gee, how do I pay for this? We want to also look at, well, do, Hey, John, you're going on and on about this. Is it even available in my target market? Well, for a whole bunch of the states, oh, yeah, it is. The big blue, in a manner of speaking. There are some simplified issue states 
D.C. Well, District of Columbia is not a state, but Illinois and Virginia are. And then there are a few states where hospital-wise not approved product. So if you're marketing in Hawaii, Massachusetts, New Mexico, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont, not available in this product. Something to consider, obviously. We want to go back and make certain, too, that that guarantee issue and pre-existing condition causes are properly explained with this timetable. So this is a really good graphic to help you do so. And you'll find that presentations are available through your contract with Surebridge as well, through their agent website. And we want to make certain that we're being forthright with the folks. And it's one of those things that most of us realize you can't insure a house that's already on fire. Unless you got a GI component. And then, of course, how does that deal with some of the pre-existing conditions that come with that sort of coverage? We look at the folks that are being underwritten. There are certain knockout medical questions by the lookout period that can make a huge difference. So if we're looking at somebody in, somebody that's on oxygen, has a pacemaker, uh, the activities of daily life deficiencies that come into play, or they're pregnant, confined to a nursing home, hospital or a wheelchair, well, you got a knockout. Within the last year, have they been in the hospital more than three times? So a one-time visit, a visit with an encore, as an have that, but if they're in three times, yeah, it does. And are they experiencing uncontrolled cholesterol, blood pressure, and not taking medications? We want to see how they are addressing some of their current physical maladies, and are they under control? We then have different look-back periods that come into play. So within the last two years, beyond that hospitalization and uh, physical malady conditions within the last year, we want to look at then, are there abnormal tests when they'll follow up? Are they pended for coming up surgery and tests and treatments? Because, hey, nobody wants to buy a claim with however you feel about a big insurance company taking care of that sort of thing. You also have to look at if they're diabetic, is it under control? Are they taking more than 50 units of, of insulin per day? or have an A1C that's greater than 7%. If that's the case, well, not going to happen. Do they battle respiratory disorder, COPD, lung disease, cystic fibrosis? Within the last two years, if that's going on, you got a knockout. Three years, substance abuse, alcoholism, major depression, psychotic disorder. There's your knockouts within that time period. The last five years, have they had a heart attack or are they fighting a heart disease, a stroke or a mini stroke? Are they battling Alzheimer's, dementia, hep C, cirrhosis, liver disease, kidney failure, Parkinson's, ALS, lupus? I'm not going to even attempt the pronunciation of that word. RA, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis with bone fractures. You got some folks that are more advantaged or advanced into some of the Maladies that come with us as our body ages, and they, while they may well be one of the reasons why they really want to talk about this program, it may be in a circumstance where they're talking about it for someone else. You also have a 10-year look back in, in, in this circumstance for cancer, the big C. There are some forms of cancer that are not curable, and they're on medication forever. Hence, my door experience for you that caused a little bit of a time uh, way out here during the presentation. And then, of course, you get the folks with certain types of conditions where it's a knockout, regardless how long ago it's been. Have they had a heart lung transplant, kidney transplant, whatever it happens to be, organ transplants, it's going to knock them off. HIV AIDS, great strides made in that area medically, but in the circumstances, it's a knockout, as is Crohn and ulcerative colitis. So if you're talking about your uh, gastrointestinal tract with those two, well, it's a knockout as well. It does give you an opportunity, however, the systems within Surebridge to build the plan according to the information that you obtain during that discovery period. And so you don't have to calculate this stuff manually. Remember my old illusion of the chisel and granite tablet? Well, 
yet the joy is an electronic process that does this rating and uh, premium determination process for you. Awesome way of taking care of it. You bundle this too for those of you that are active with uh, Premier or, or perhaps one of our integrity marketing platform partners and you have access to uh, Medicare Center and some of the tools that are in there that help you designate hospital indemnity coverage. You can determine the amounts that are necessary there, use that system, or use SureBridge and the calculations that are available here. So it's a great way to walk through the process and initiate that application process as well. So it goes through and it gives you the opportunity to plug in the numbers that are needed based on the information you have during the discovery period. Big difference for you. And it gives you then how you lay that out. So it's a question of, oh, I'm going to add this rider or I'm not. This is the amount that's coming into play. And it gives you then the opportunity to play with that premium number. Because one of the things that we see in the Medicare Advantage world, well, normally you have that median income within the Medicare Advantage arena. Eh, a couple of years ago, about 26,100 bucks there in that area. Some of the folks are selecting an MA plan because of the diminished or no premium that comes with it. This, however, gives you an opportunity to look at and add to, to the coverages with a premium they can bear. And you can play with it through the plan builder process. It's a great way to deliver upon, am I going to give you a max value or what are we going to do with some of these different pieces? And this comes into play if the person has a med sup or not. So remember, some of this stuff, it's a fee-for-service program that pays it regardless of the other coverages. And many folks that have a med sup recognize the expenses that come with certain critical illnesses or challenges you have with a heart attack or stroke. I do a lot with the American Heart Association. And there's a lot of talk about how many people are taken from us because of cardiovascular difficulty. One of the things we really need to keep in mind as agents is not everybody dies. They have to deal with it on an ongoing basis thereafter, and it's not necessarily inexpensive to do so. So look beyond some of the things that may come into play. Open your mind to the fact, that, and there are dollars coming out of that household that extend well beyond the medical cost for a doctor or a facility. Let's look at that demand product, and I'm going to speed up here a little bit because got a few slides to go through and we want to talk about a program here that is a demand product regardless of the base medical coverage you got a med sup program at best they probably have a discount program for some of these areas if they're self-insuring for some things obviously they need this help they have an ma coverage some of this might be integrated into the plan that they have but it may not be enough and a lot of times folks will say, well, gee, I got a $3,000 dental benefit through this coverage. That's a lot of money. But for full mouth extraction and dentures, it's not enough. So this is a great way to help people in that regard. And we can use the Medicare Bible to do this. The Medicare and U book that's sent electronically or by the United States Postal Service addresses what Medicare covers and what it doesn't. So that great page that's in there, that page 22 that talks about what's not covered, what's the first couple, three things you see there? Dental care, eye exams, work down through some of the hearing aids and some other pieces that are available. A lot of folks assume that it comes into play. And page 55 tells us, nah, you know what happens when you assume that old Tony Randall line in the odd couple. We can help them in this regard. And most folks don't realize it. They think Medicare is much more all-encompassing all by itself than it happens to be. And many of the folks that have had coverage in the past and are going on Medicare, well, majority of them don't have dental coverage. Or if they do, it's not enough. And what's going to keep them from going to the dentist where a program of good dental health can make such a huge difference in the overall health of these individuals? 
Well, they're not going because they don't think they can afford it. Haven't been in the past year. They spent quite a bit of money and they need to make certain that, well, the teeth I have in my kisser, they're not wooden like the old stereotype we think of George Washington, but the, the teeth, they don't have natural teeth. They're using dentures, comes into play. And as I mentioned, while most MA programs have access, sometimes it's not enough. And we want to make certain then that the programs we offer fit that situation. This, once again, that's a program that's not limited to a traditional Medicare population. It goes down to zero. No, well, you got a zero key. You know, you got one or two teeth popping through. That might not be the case. Children, however, with a, a parental type of situation, but you can have a standalone child coverage through this as well. It's guarantee issue, no health questions, renewable for life. You got different benefit maximums per person, per policy year. It's got a one time per person per year deductible. That's not applicable to the preventative dental or the vision hearing exams, but that's an out of pocket piece that comes into play. It's not limited to a network. However, you can get preferential pricing for in net network participants. It's a great way to have that benefit extended in a manner of speaking because they're driving down the cost of the procedures. And that's a big deal because we have to look at what the coverages entail. So if we look at some of the preventative dental benefits, some folks are really good about seeing their dentist twice a year or at least once a year. And they're going through the preventative um, services that are type one that are covered in a particular fashion. And you got some of the basic dental which are some of the restorative services, uh, filings, the films, the, the mouth x-rays, and different care that comes in that area. And then you have the things that are really a motivator for a lot of folks, and these are the major dental benefits. So restorative benefits, uh, endodontic, oral surgery, bridges, crowns, dentures, extractions, some of the things that are most expensive, how are they covered? We want to make certain that folks realize well, if it's preventative, we're talking about this category. It's covered at 100%, no waiting period. If you're looking at some of the base coverages here, it's a sliding scale. It's a sliding scale up the longer they have the policy. So it can really help with some of those expenses throughout the lifetime of the policy with it. And you have that same sort of situation when we look at those major services. And those are a lot of the things that come into play, that kind of kicks a person in gear as to whether or not, gee, I really need that service. You have a waiting period on those with this program of nine months, a bit of a gestation period there, so to speak. But if you're looking at a major expense and you have a reasonable premium on a dental vision hearing program or a dental program all by itself, you can't invest money to get that sort of return on your dollars. You can't discount this price differential, which can make a big difference for an individual. And if you're using a network provider, those are at a negotiated rate. So that makes a difference. And we wanna make certain that we impress upon people how you can get the most bang out of your buck out of this program. When we look at the, the plan that integrates in vision and hearing benefits as well, You've got some different things that come into play here where the hearing examination, purchase of hearing aids and the repairs of those hearing aids can really come into play with help. And if they're using true hearing, you get a discount ahead of time and can make a big difference then as to the overall cost of uh, that appliance in a manner of speaking. When you look at vision benefits, and we all have, well, I read an article here recently that said 70% of the population over the age of 65 is wearing some sort of a corrective eye appliance. Most of the time glasses, 10% of it's with contact lenses, but we want to look through the examination that puts us into play there. And this is through an optometrist in this circumstance, because if they're going to an ophthalmologist because 
well, hey, my cataracts aren't ripe yet, or I'm I'm dealing with glaucoma. We're looking at a Medicare benefit there and not a, an eye exam through an optometrist. Different pricing, different coverages. And the cost then of the apparatus that we choose to help us with that vision benefit. It also helps us then with the follow-up visits to make certain that, gee, I'm not really adjusting to these uh, the bifocals in my lenses or whatever it is. You want to make certain we're taking people, taking care of people all the way through the cycle. And it makes a difference then as to how we can access the benefits through these programs. You keep in mind when these programs come into play, that exam is available immediately. It's covered 100% all years. There's no deductible involved. When we look at the need for glasses, then we've got that nine month waiting period, sliding scale up, and that deductible applies. Remember, combined vision benefit uh, is $200 a year. And we realize that you, you wanna get really fancy, you can pay two to three times that for just the frames. The population we address in most circumstances aren't in the land of the hoity-toity there. And we have some excellent uh, coverages that are available to us that are within or close to striking distance of that benefit moving forward. When we speak of hearing examinations, this too is covered immediately, 100% um, in all years with a max of $75 benefit, no deductible in this circumstance. And a lot of times this reveals to us the fact that I don't have a hearing problem, I got a selective hearing problem. I tune in and out kind of thing. It does then give us the opportunity to help with the hearing hardware. So the hearing aid uh, coverage begins after that nine month waiting period. Once again, a sliding scale up and down there. The deductible does apply. The hearing benefit is 500 bucks every two years. But if you're looking at someone that has an MA plan and that coverage isn't totally all encompassing either in many, most circumstances with hearing pieces, depending upon how they time it, well, gee, it can really ease that financial obligation there as well. Folks in most circumstances have the opportunity to use, to have a card and you can do, uh, designate that on the application process. Many folks, however, well, gee, it's a tangible, non-tangible benefit. I want a card sent to me. However, some folks, they just want to do stuff online. So they have the access to that. Uh, type of program identification according to their choice. Where do you find the providers? Well, keep in mind, applies to all dentists, but if we work within the network, we're extending that benefit. We're getting most of the uh, the coverage out of it because we're we're pushing down the cost of the coverage up front. That can make a big difference for us, and we can find the providers through SureBridgeDental.com. We want to make certain that folks that use the card speak to the providers of the care. The, the provider may not recognize the SureBridge name, but if they're in the dental world, they understand about the Carrington network. They're working in the audiologist, they understand true hearing. And with vision, pardon my typo, well, not a big deal because it's a reimbursement. It's not um, money's up front. So some different things that come into play when we help people understand how folks recognize the coverages. So what we've done here is give you an oversight or an overview, I should say, of the different coverages that are available through SureBridge and the ones that most directly affect our target audience. Remember, the portfolio goes beyond that in different circumstances, but we want to make certain that you realize these are programs that are most frequently accessed for our target market. Now, why do you want to do that through Premier Marketing? Well, we can help make it as simple as possible to contract. With SureBridge, we're going to do a direct link with the company. And keep in mind, we're seeing more and more carriers that don't do paper contracting at all anymore. So utilizing SureLC, Surance Bay, whatever you, you want to call it, creating your agent profile helps you contract with multiple carriers by a click once you've uh, put in your information and that includes your errors and admissions coverage 
which we do have a program that discounts that cost for qualified agents. We'll make sure you qualified agent, well, you got a contract with us. But this is a program you own. So it's not like being added to a blanket E&O for just one policy, and then you got to figure out, how am I going to satisfy this requirement for everybody else that I contract with? Because, well, well, gee, Premier Marketing is a pretty big organization. We have a broad portfolio of products. We don't offer everything everywhere. I don't know of any marketing organization that does, no matter what they may say. This is a program you own. This is a program that satisfies that requirement through contracting with different carriers, with different marketing organizations. We do also offer bundled continuing education credits through our association with WebCE to keep your license in play. You can add to your own benefit package through a modified uh, guarantee issue on a disability program for yourself on which you're paid a commission because, hey, as an independent agent, we've got to maintain our own benefit package. This is a way you can get into DI coverage, disability income program for yourself and simplify the process. Much as what I mentioned up front where today's presentation is being recorded, past presentations are made available as well and in, are available on our website and on our YouTube channel. But keep in mind, many of the topics that we discussed today, particularly if you want to talk about dental vision hearing benefits, that's a great presentation you have available for the community doing live events or through webinars that you may be staging as well. And so how do I approach faith-based organizations or providers or how can I help market this? If you're doing DVH programs, man, visiting dentists, that can make a huge difference. A DMO is not the same as an HMO. You don't see as many of those. And so you have dentists that are under greater pressure for their account receivables. Having programs like this and being able to explain it to that medical professional and their staff can make a big difference. And then offering it to their patients as well. And you have a number of topics that are helpful to do that just for you. I mentioned this briefly earlier in the presentation, but the Medicare Center program, man, it's awesome. Uh, single login for multiple quoting engines. You can do those side-by-side -side comparisons, not just with the base medical coverages, but also with these ancillary programs. And while these do not require a scope of appointment, that may be one of the things you put in your marketing plan because it opens the discussion of a comparison of benefits year over year. Remember that Kaiser Family Foundation slide early in the presentation said 70% of the folks didn't do a review? That might prompt the review there for you, and it stores it for you as it collects. We're talking to Medicare recipients on different programs there. It takes care of that call recording and storage as well. Big difference for you. Pearl, a microsite is available for you for this where you can tag your site, uh, link it to it or that to your site, and it gives you then the opportunity for your folks to go out and shop on their own, perhaps even enroll on their own. And since it's your personal URL, you are the agent of record and you receive commission on it. It gives you then that, that client database, that CRM, that gives you the opportunity to speak intelligently on a year-to-year -year review process. Big difference along with switcher tags that might tell you within your book of business, your clients or prospects that you have in there, who is more likely to switch programs based on some changes in their market. Lead Center, I'm gonna go into that in greater detail, but you can buy leads through the system and have them put in that CRM, making it pretty simple for you. There are also different resources available that help you be more effective with your selling skills. So it's not just prospecting, it's closing. Are there things that can help us be more effective in that area? Yeah, there are. And it can be made available to you in a mobile application as well. Smartphones, man. Who would have imagined 20 years ago, whatever, that your phone has more computing capability than the computers that were in play that put a man on the moon? And it's in your pocket. You can access it through that mobile application. And a quote. The old comedian, J.J. Walker, it's all free for agents that contract with us or our platform partners. 
many of these plans as well, since they aren't regulated with the same oversight as a Medicare Advantage or PDP program, they may well have carrier incentives that can help you qualify for carrier trips and premier incentive programs as well. That includes the return of our producers convention. Uh, that took a little bit of a hiatus during the pandemic. So some different places where you can go with our organization, in addition to carrier trips and other incentives that can make a difference for you. We help put you in front of people. Um, we had a little discussion going earlier on our Facebook group, uh, talking about contact list, who cold calls, who does that anymore? Some do, some don't, but we can provide you a contact list at low or no cost Butt it up against do not call so you stay compliant in your marketing in that arena. These community-based programs, man, if you worked retail with Walmart or through a carrier uh, market venue opportunity, hopefully you didn't just drop that relationship after Pearl Harbor Day. You're going to continue to work it throughout the year. And mentioning some folks, well, it doesn't affect their business. Uh, in a particular pharmacy that you offer dental programs. And that's one of the things that can deepen the relationship with that location that you worked at. And it's a great presentation for influencers in the community, those faith-based organizations that may have people generated in an audience that aren't responding to other marketing techniques. Big difference. And it gives you the opportunity, once again, to approach different providers. If you get into marketing dual special needs programs, there are carriers out there that chase that business through dentists. And that practice isn't exclusive to Medicare beneficiaries. So having a program like Surebridge's DVH program or a dental program can make a big difference in the success, financial success of that dentist location. You do have an opportunity to pick up some carrier generated prospects. This is normally a quid pro quo situation where you're working with an MA plan. You've done business with them. They're doing business with you. We want to make certain that you realize that that's controlled in most circumstances for most carriers through the agent managers in your market, your target market. What kind of relationship do we have there? How can we strengthen and deepen that and take advantage of some of the marketing opportunities they're lending us? So if we go up beyond the, the lead center that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, we do also have internet lead programs, direct mail support, a really cool T65 locator. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail in a minute, but also how to work referrals. You got that CRM within Medicare Center. You can call up your client base and say, hey, I got a, a really strong dental program that I'm offering a lot of folks. Um, in our area, do you know of people that would be interested in that sort of a benefit package? You're not hitting them up directly, but what's one of their first responses? Well, I know someone that could look at that information. It's me and the wife or me and the mister. Working through how to ask for referrals, when to do it, and remembering to do it can make a big difference for you. Our direct mail support is based on production but you can qualify for it in a couple of different ways through the health programs much as what we discussed today but also through final expense production and we do so through preferred lead vendors because we vet their systems we look at the mailings that are going out to make certain that we stay in compliance but you can qualify for help for 2,000 pieces of mail a month if your production is there for you we also have an opportunity for you to fill uh, in the blanks in your schedule through never distributed direct mail responses. At the price has changed throughout the year, different in different areas, but this is the latest information we have on some of those costs. Very effective for you. And when it says cost will vary, yeah, it will. If you're an agent that's uh, contracting in multiple states, you may have leads available to you at one price in Florida, another one in Arizona. It depends. But this is a supply and de demand type of situation. It's a great way to fill your schedule on an, uh, an infrequent or a regular basis. The internet leads we have are through and associated with an organization that gives us Facebook leads. One available to you through Final Expense 
and for the Medicare arena as well. One of the things that you see on internet leads though is, hey, we're a microwave society. You get fast response on these, but they expect a fast response from you as well. One of my friends picked up a lead at two o'clock in the morning from an individual. She called him at six. The person had already gone elsewhere. Well, you weren't fast enough. I'm not awake all the time, 24 hours a day either. So we got to make certain that we um, address these in a very timely fashion. The lead center program, well, some of that is influenced by internet lead uh, um, generation as well. But you can have a live transfer or you can have um, the ones that are available to you through your CRM. Your live transfer, that information is going to go through your CRM be available in your CRM as well, but you can determine how much you want to spend and when you want to spend it. So a great way here too of turning on or turning off a lead production piece that comes into play. One of the agents I spoke with earlier today was talking about, hey, I get most of my leads. I don't cold call anymore. I get most of my leads through referrals or through some of the educational opportunities that I'm offering people. Remember, we can help in those areas, but this is a great way to turn on or off lead flow based on, hey, how's my calendar looking? And if you're budgeting for it, how can I do this consistently as well to make certain that my calendar is full of folks that are interested in what I'm offering? At T65 Locator, this is a program. You download your smartphone or your laptop or whatever device that you're using. You register for it. They determine, well, gee, you do have a contract with us. So once again, this is JJ Walker's Arena. It's free. You can set up certain parameters and find where people live. So let's say you stacked appointments in one geographic area, one cancels. You can do a couple of things to fill your time. You can catch up with paperwork or you can door knock, door knock for dental programs, identifying people that are perhaps turning 65 or 67, whatever parameter you put into play and fill that hour it's a or whatever time period you have for your appointments a great way to help you identify where people are geographically that referral process once again that's not just for the sales process it's a way to keep your book of business involved with you invested with you and as you do so that not only that contact but multiple product in the household it increases the stickiness the retention, the persistency, whatever you want to call it, where you got more than one product in the household, you got a better chance of keeping them on the books. And that's your salary moving forward. We do all this because we want your business. We want to be referable to you. And these programs enable you to implement them quickly to make them part of your personal marketing plan. Ancillary programs like this don't require certification. Yeah, you got to be licensed. Yeah, you got to be contracted. But you can put that in play pretty quickly. Um, there's not as much contracting pressure as there is at the beginning of AEP and some other time periods. So you can put it in your marketing program and do it as John Wayne said in the movie, The Cowboys, paraphrasing it, slap a piece of bacon in that biscuit, saddle up, let's ride, we're burning daylight. It's what you can do now. It's what you can do throughout the year in a supposed lock-in period. Keep in mind with all those SEPs, special election periods that are there, the different enrollment periods, the majority of people on Medicare can change their coverage throughout the year if they're locked in or not, depending upon whether or not they qualify for one of them. This is a way of helping identify those folks, that 70 plus percent that didn't do an annual review, so you can make it part of your overall marketing plan and aid in the success that you have. I'm not finally at the point where I'm looking at the time. I'm long. I apologize for that. But for those of you that are familiar with Premier and you've done business with us in the past, this is my opportunity to say thank you. Appreciate that business. You look to deepen that relationship through programs such as what are offered by Surebridge. For those of you that are checking us out that haven't had any business with us, thank you for the opportunity of looking at that. We want to make certain that you have an agent success manager, a marketer within our organization that can help you walk through some of these different programs that I have described today. But I also want to thank everyone 
or the allocation of their most valuable resource. What is that? It's your time. Thank you for spending that time with us today, particularly when I've gone a little long. So I'm gonna check real quickly to make certain that we have questions covered. Here's that we have. And at this point in time then, I wanna thank you once again for coming on with us. And until we're able to speak again, I wish you good selling. Thanks so very much. We look forward to visiting with you very soon.